We previously compared an iPhone 15 Pro to an Alice camera, and today you might be curious to see how it compares against the Google Pixel 8 Pro for everyday photos. The Google Pixel 8 Pro is one of the most advanced smartphone cameras out there, and it's known for its AI-powered photography magic. Some people have described it as one of the most sophisticated cameras on a smartphone. The Alice camera also uses AI and computational photography to enhance color, dynamic range, and the detail of images and videos, but it has a micro four thirds image sensor that's 200% bigger and you can attach high quality lenses. If you've ever had any doubts about the quality of the Alice camera, then please continue watching this video because we're going to check out some landscape, portrait and wide angle photo comparisons. Unfortunately, we only had access to the Pixel 8 Pro for one afternoon, so we don't have an extensive variety of images, but it does demonstrate the point that we're trying to make. All of the photos are going to be taken in a very casual, everyday environment situation, definitely not staged or with any professional expensive studio setups. All the photos are straight out of camera with no edits taken at exactly the same time. So let's dive into them. By the way, the first photo will always be the Pixel and the second one will always be the Alice camera. And I'll always put lens information on both photos. Right, so we've got a photo here of a kiosk in Granary Square in King's Cross, London. Uh, this is a photo taken by the Pixel, and I'm not too sure what's going on here with the blurriness in the top right. Um, the trees seem to be blurred out and the kiosk seems to be blurred out. Uh, this was definitely not taken in portrait mode. Uh, this was using the 3X camera on the Pixel. Now, this is the photo taken on the Alice camera. As you can see, the colors are much warmer. I believe that the colors have more depth. Uh, and also there's a lot of detail and you can see that specifically in the text here. Let's see if I can zoom in easily. Um, so that says Machado. Whereas if you go on the pixel, the, the, the text is super blurry. Now this is what happens when you have a good lens versus a smartphone lens. Now we've got another photo with a subject in the scene. And again, this is not a portrait photo. This is taken on the 3X camera, just so that we could match up the focal lengths with the lens that we had on the Alice camera. Um, what I notice here is that the background separation is very smartphone-like. And we also saw that on the iPhone. And similarly, um, the colors here looked quite washed out compared to this example, which is taken on the Alice camera. Um, you can see the colors here are much more vibrant. The colors have much more depth to them. Uh, and uh, the background blur is very natural. You can actually see the bokeh, bokeh balls, some people say. Um, you kind of get them here, but it, lo it, looks very, it looks very strange. Whereas on the Alice camera, it's, it's natural. So this is the pixel. This is the Alice camera. Just look at the detail also in the facial hair. Again, gonna zoom in. Uh, that doesn't look great to me. This is the pixel. Whereas if you go in on the Alice camera, you can see a lot more detail. You can see what's happening. You can see the detail on the cap as well. Uh, so overall, really, really um, natural looking photo. You could argue that maybe the highlights in the background on the Alice camera is a bit blown out. Um, but otherwise, yeah, Alice camera has much more of a natural uh, look to it. Again, this is the same composition, nothing too fancy or interesting here, but you can see those same problems at play. You could argue that there is quite a lot of detail in the Google Pixel 8 Pro uh, in terms of the, the cap. But then if I switch to the Alice camera, you can just see that the, the, the depth of colors is much greater. Um, the background separation is more naturalistic and the subject seems to pop out much more. And that's just what you get when you have bigger, bigger sensors with better lenses. Right, this is a portrait example. So what we did is we went in the portrait mode on the pixel and uh, we took a photo and it, it blurs the background much like how you uh, could blur a background by using something like a Gaussian blur on Photoshop. Um, the outline is very rough actually um it doesn't get it it doesn't get it very good and also you can see that the outline of the blur is is not great on the on the jacket whereas this is a, this is the photo taken on the alice camera it is a quite tough scene i have to admit there is a, a lot of dynamic range here there's some the sun is glaring down and reflecting off this building in the back 
there are skies, there's a lot of light in the background. The foreground is quite contrasty and dark, so it's a quite challenging scene. But the Alice camera does a pretty good job here of, of maintaining all of those uh, dynamic ranges and making sure that everything's visible. Uh, but if you compare uh, not just the dynamic range and the colors here, but the background separation to the pixel, which is this one, you can just tell it's very smartphone-esque. It's very, very sort of fake. Whereas Alice camera has a much more natural background separation. The pixel does have a lot of detail on the on the um, the camera in the foreground, like you can see the logo. But uh, we were using an f two point eight lens, and uh, the focus was very much on the subject's uh, face. And you can just see the detail here is 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 really great um, compared to the pixel, which has a watercolor effect to the photos when you punch in. Again, this is another one of a uh, subject uh, in the foreground. This was not taken with portrait mode. This was taken with the 1X camera. Uh, what you'll notice here is that the photo looks fine until you compare it to the Alice camera, which is much warmer. Uh, if I go back to the pixel now, the pixel is much cooler and uh, the colors are washed out. And I don't know why smartphones do this. Um, they really have washed out colors. I think it's probably because of the tone mapping that they do and the HDR that they that they do it really tends to overexpose uh, images. And they haven't got the white balance correct here because we were shooting at golden hour and you can see that um, the, the warmth in the Alice camera photo is much greater and actually much closer to what it was like in the when we were taking the photo around 3.30, 4 p.m. So that was our very quick photo comparison. As I said in my iPhone 15 Pro video, I'm not gonna be diving too much deeper into my thoughts because I'm going to be sharing them soon in another video where I explain why upgrading from a smartphone to an Alice camera could be a good decision for you. Our main takeaway, however, is that if you're upgrading to one of these latest smartphones, you won't actually be investing in a system that gives you much improvement in quality. You'll get an incremental improvement from last year's models. I don't typically like to do these comparison videos, but so many of you asked for them, so we've made these two videos. Now that we've done these two, there's inevitably gonna be someone in the comments asking for a Samsung video. Other than clickbait, I don't think these comparison videos are very useful. The problem with smartphones is that because of their small sensors and small lenses, they have to compensate in ways that actually overprocess the image and make them look fake. But you can let us know what you think by dropping your thoughts in the comment section below and if you want to learn more about the Alice camera, then check the link in the description. Thank you very much for watching this video and I'll catch you in the next one.